So just finding your feet, bending your knees, finding your feet, knees tracking over second toes. Inhale, pulling up on the thighs. And exhale, bending. Now, as you do this, if you feel that one leg feels like you can't stretch it long when you're pulling up, like you can't straighten the knee, you could step that foot back. So I'm going to do this with my right leg. And as soon as I do this, it's like, oh, I can actually stand tall. So if you have that imbalance in your legs and your hips, just connect with that a bit. Just finding your feet. If you like on the inhale, lift those toes on your toes. Exhale, bending down. So I always start with the legs and feet and then work the way my way up the spine. And then I go back down the spine in the asanas. Inhale, drawing the energy up from the earth. Exhale, rooting down to the earth, just starting with that. Inhale, straightening the knees, pulling up on the kneecaps, lifting the toes, and maybe can we now squeeze the glutes? Let's feel the hips now. As we exhale, starting to engage the pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in, and release the head. And look at the feet, perhaps. Inhale, going a little higher now, adding a bit of a back arch, your arms at the side, palms facing up, thumbs back, perhaps, or palms down, see which feels better, or thumbs up, which one feels better for your neck and shoulders. Exhale, bend the knees, perhaps bend the knees a little bit more now. Exhale, hands to the belly. Inhale, lifting, expanding. And each time, perhaps the arms coming a little bit higher to comfort. Start adding Ujjayi Pranayama, constricting the throat. And on that exhale, just bringing the hands to where it is comfortable in your body matching with the height of your arms and go all the way up to the heart bowing the head as you exhale inhale perhaps lifting the head and looking slightly up as you arch a bit more some of you might be able to add even what i call the hallelujah pose the arms at the side Palms facing in or forward and exhale. Now that you're in your body, bring the hands to the heart. Anjali Mudra, or if you like hands facing down on the heart. And make an intention today, perhaps linked to the hips, the emotional center. If you like, you can actually drop your hands to that lower area of awareness at the gut, pubic area. Maybe bend your knees to feel it a bit more. Drop your awareness from your head down towards your gut. As you inhale, expand the belly, exhale, draw it in. Just see what comes, an intention that might arise for today's practice to do with the hips, physically or emotionally. We're going to work with the kleshas today the clouds that obscure our truth. And when you're ready, inhale, arms coming up at the sides, radiating like the sun. 
Though it is cloudy and rainy, that sun is shining somewhere behind all of that. And this is a great metaphor for what we're doing in yoga. Exhale, bringing the hands forward. We're going to have the palms facing down. I'm just working with that image, perhaps, of water falling down in your body. It's like a mirror, glass. There's water flowing down on both sides, cleansing that mirror of the mind as you exhale. Inhale, bringing in the sun, heating things up, connecting you with your essential essence of light. And exhale, cleansing away the thoughts, the words, the actions that take us off center. Inhale, some of those thoughts have long, very long history, long patterning in us. You'll be say even from past lives, we come in with those patterns. Exhale. Now, as you exhale, bending the knees, feeling the feet. Now, if you like adding, as you inhale, coming on the toes, that's your choice. If you want to go into the ankles and toes a bit more. And exhale, cleansing the mirror of the mind, front, sides, back, water pouring down. Encourage you to think about the back body. We often forget about it. You can just think of a waterfall. Inhale, if you prefer. Inhale, that sunshine radiating out of the heart. And exhale, that waterfall coming down front, sides, and back. And if you like, you can stay in full Tadasana. Palms together or interlock fingers. We're going to do palms together. And if it's hurting your feet for any reason, you can always come down on the heels. Or you can inhale up and exhale. Just bring the heels down and stretch up. You can always adjust those arms, of course, according to your shoulders. When you're ready from here, going side to side, exhale, coming to one side, releasing the bottom arm. The top arm, again, can also bend or stay straight. It's just warming up. It's a bit cold today, so do a careful warm up today. Starting to get into the whole side body, upper back and lower back, so the side ribs, the QL hip, SI joints, all of that working now into the IT bands as well. It's also a core exercise because as you go to the side, your core has to work, keep you stable. Inhale up, exhale side, you can come on the toes or not. And you can also keep the hands together if you prefer, and you can even stay on the toes if you want to make it harder. I usually come down on the exhale to get a bit deeper into my hip. And just one more round. When you finish, just standing in Samastiti. Notice how you feel.
Her emotions are like the weather. They're just always changing. Yoga, we call this the gunas, the play of the gunas. Part of us is very active. The part of us is very passive. And the balance between the active and the passive or still. And yoga says we go beyond actually even that balance point with something else to freedom beyond the duality of nature. Nature includes the mind. So mind and our body are a continuum. Both part of nature and they're a continuum from all of nature. Right, adding in a twist, we're going to start with the upper body. So inhale, arms at the sides. Exhale, bringing the arms to your left. And your front arm, you can bring it to your back shoulder, drawing the belly in and let the hips turn for now. Inhale, center, draw the shoulder blades together. Palms can be down if that works for you. Exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in as you twist the other direction. Notice if you're able to twist one side more than the other. You can try to stamp down the big toe of the side you're on. Inhale. And exhale. Now, if you want to challenge yourself, you can come up on the toes on the inhale. And then exhale, you could stay on the toes or come down at the end of the exhale. Draw that belly in, inhale center. So you can always add that toe movement, heel movement. This is upper back, neck and shoulders. And then we're going to take it down. We're going to go down the spine now. So we went up the spine. Now we're going to go down the spine into the legs and feet. Okay, now why don't you keep your hips facing forward as you do this? So feel that difference between the hips and the upper back. As you inhale, you can squeeze your hips together and exhale again, squeeze them together. Try to keep that hip facing forward as you twist back with your upper back. Just do one more round of that. These twists are also good for kidneys. One of you asked about kidneys today. Twists are good as well as back bends into the kidneys, which also affects the adrenal system. And when you're ready, release. Okay. So we're going to go into a forward bend. We're going to do a half forward bend to begin with. So inhale, a little bit different than we've been doing. Inhale, arms coming front, interlock the fingers. Exhale, bend the knees and draw the belly in. And Sit as much as you can down, inhale, coming up. Exhale, coming down. Now, if you wanna add neck and shoulders, you can bring the hands forward and that will help you to round the upper back, neck and shoulders a bit more and you can probably sit a bit more too. Inhale, coming up. And you can also do this coming up and down from the chair. So make sure you don't miss the chair. So first time, be a little careful. This is surprisingly challenging actually. And this is one of the indicators of aging, your ability to come up and down off the floor, off the chair. And this is also a back arch. And squats are very helpful for balancing the hips. After you've done at least six of these, you've probably done a few more, 
you're going to exhale, release the arms down. And notice how you feel. Okay, we're going to um, go a little bit more further down now. I'm just taking a slightly different approach today. Um, we're going to do some lunges on the chair. So I think we did these a couple of weeks ago, if I'm remembering. You're going to bring your left foot on the chair. And this is going to get into the psoas. So we're going more into the hip now. And the back foot parallel to the front if you can, or you can turn it out. And the length of your stride just depends on the flexibility of your hips. So just starting nice and easy, you're going to inhale, come forward. Your back heel comes off the ground. Your, heat, your knee can come towards your toes. And feel that stretch in your right hip. Exhale, coming back. Just that. Inhale forward. You can bring your hands on the wall for a bit more of an arch. Press away from the wall. Exhale, release. And full. Inhale, one arm, opposite arm to leg or both arms. Exhale. I'm bringing my hands to the back of the chair and maybe straightening the leg. Find your expression. You can do this on the floor, obviously. It's a little less intense for the hip. It's also great for the lower back. I created this um, 2002, I think. I discovered this one evening when I had lower back pain for years, and this was one of the poses that got, got me out of it. And it's very much to do with the hips and the lower back. Just finding your expression of the pose. Now we're going to stay in that lunge, the hands on the wall, inhale here, or on the back of the chair. Exhale, bend the back knee. Bend that back knee. So my right knee is bending, my left uh, leg is on the chair. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. Now you can have your hands on the seat of the chair too, that's a bit deeper. Inhale, straighten. So bend. So that's good. If you've got one hip higher than the other, this is really addressing that right now. So I often teach this with lower back stuff or hip stuff. It's kind of both. Release the spine forward as you exhale. Inhale. Come up. Exhale, release. If you want, you could inhale, bring the arms up. If you want to add a little more balance to it, exhale, release. And just finishing up. You can stay there for a few breaths or coming out of the pose. Let's just stretch that front leg first. Your hands can be on the back of the chair. They can be on the wall. Your leg can be straight. So you can just do inhale and exhale straight to where you can. Some of you will not be able to straighten the leg. That's fine. Just focus on drawing that front hip back, whatever, wherever you are. I'm just looking at you in the your little boxes there. Yeah, so feel free to adjust. And then some of you can go into the full four bend and inhale. Point the toes, look up, exhale, flex the toes towards the nose, come down, draw that belly in. It's definitely a balanced pose. You can turn that foot on the ground out if you like for more balance. It's also getting into the legs and feet, our foundation. We spent a couple of weeks there. Last week we moved into the hips. It's our second week in the hips. And next week we're going into the lower back. And if you want to get a bit more into the groin, you can turn to the big toe side. Up to the foot, but that's a little hard to do unless you're on a bench. All right, when you're ready, coming out. 
And we're going to try to do all of that on the other side. I hope I can remember today's vinyasa. Every time I do it, it's slightly different. Bringing your right foot up, your left foot back to your comfort. So it's like a runner's lunge. That back foot parallel, if you can, to the front. And just finding your pose. So just starting with the lunge. Inhale, knee coming towards the toes. So it's coming forward of the ankles. That's no problem. And exhale, coming back a little bit, just to begin with, drawing that right hip back. Inhale, coming forward. Just warming up. That left hip now is getting a big stretch, that left psoas, exhale. So working with the psoas, uh, we know from somatic experiencing work, uh, body-based therapies, for mind emotions that we seem to hold freeze responses from the past in our psoas because those are it's a big area of sympathetic mobilization so if you were in a situation in the past where you couldn't flee some danger you might be a bit locked in your psoas. Now it could be just you have scoliosis or imbalance of your spine or something completely muscular skeletal. Okay, adding on if you like, starting to straighten that front leg, maybe on the exhale. Inhale, maybe starting to bring the hands to the wall or up to the sky. These are add ons to make it harder. I'm even playing with lifting my toes when I come back, my back toes for fun. I haven't done that before. That's kind of fun. And you can bring your arms all the way up. If you've done at least six of your hardest version, just staying in the forward bend. And you're going to bend. Sorry, we'll do that. Yeah, we're going to bend that back knee. We'll do that first. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend that back knee. So you're bending and you're dropping that left hip. Inhale, straighten the leg a little bit or a lot. Exhale, bend back knee. Inhale, straighten the leg, exhale, bend. Might be feeling quite a stretch on the thigh as you do that. And when you're ready, coming into your forward bend, perhaps leg on the chair, holding the chair. Now, some of you will just have your knee bent and just go to your place, drawing that right hip back as you exhale, inhale, bend. Or if you can, Staying in your forward bend. Inhale, pointing the toes. Exhale, flex the toes towards the nose. When you can come to one side, but be careful. That's a bit of a balancing act. Once you have the bench, then you can go to either side quite easily. And when you're ready, coming out. Careful coming out. And you should feel like you have new hips about now. And that definitely would have gotten into the kidney area as well. Those adrenals. 
above the kidneys, renal glands. Stepping back, spinal stretch using the chair. You can also have hands on the wall. You can do it that way. It might feel better. And you're just going to bring your hips side to side as you exhale. Side, inhale, center. Now, when you come to the center, try to lengthen your spine. If you've been in in-person classes with me, just imagine me drawing your hips back. And even if you haven't, imagine me have my hands on your hips and I'm trying to make your spine nice and long. Now, you might need to bend your knees to do this. And you might need to bring your feet a little wider. And the height depends on your flexibility. I started my hands on the wall. Now I'm coming to the back of the chair. I get a bit more stretch walking my heels underneath my hips. So bringing the hips side to side as you exhale, you get into the whole side body. Inhale, center, exhale, side. I feel that into my rib cage, but it depends where your tightness is, of course. Nice. And perhaps coming to the seat of the chair and just resting. You could put your forehead on the chair. You could fold your arms. Just rest there for a minute. Like Ardha Uttanasana, half forward bend. Come up on your samastiti. You should feel taller now. You might have a sense of really feeling tall. I don't know if you can feel that, but I feel all this full kind of energy going up. Just notice that. Notice the energy flowing in the body. You can think of that however you want. The yogis talked about it as a flow of prana. There's all this prana flowing, having removed the toxins or the the obstacles to that flow through our practice. Those obstacles are mind-body obstacles because in yoga, the mind and the body is one. And mind-body nature is one, actually. It's all part of nature, all of it. It's one continuum. And our awareness is like a light bulb inside of us that shines through that natural world. See if you can connect to that inner light, the hub of awareness. You know, you say it's at the heart. There's another hub of awareness at the gut. It's more our earthy hub of awareness. Place one hand at the belly button and the other at the heart center, the metaphorical heart in the center. Just feel those two centers of awareness and cognition. Feeling your feet, feeling your ankles, feeling your shins, calves, knees, thighs, hamstrings, hips, lower back, gut, middle back, upper back, lungs, heart. Shoulders, arms, hands, arms, shoulders, neck, throat, back of your head, your face, 
as many gates of awareness in the face, the eyes, the ears, the nose, the mouth, forehead, top of the head. Now we're going to draw the energy back down using an asana. Inhale, arms coming up by the sides. Feel that light shining all around you. And exhale, letting go of anything not serving you, like a waterfall coming down, cleansing that mirror of the mind. You're welcome to bend the knees for more comfort. You're welcome to bring your head to the chair rather than all the way down. It's also a wonderful prop for the forward bend. Inhale up. Oh, wow. I'm going to do the seed syllables, the Bija Mantra for the sun. Sun, we'll do two of each. First one is Ram, H R A M. Om, halfway pause, and then Ram. Oh, Ram. Inhale, coming up. Feel the light of the sun. Center of the sun at the heart. Om Hrim is the next one. H-R-I-M. Om Hrim. You take a little sip of breath halfway if you're running out. Or if you can, do that in two steps. One exhale. Room, H R U M. Oh, bro. Guess we're just doing one of each for now. Inhale, coming up. Sorry about that. I think you guys are okay. Om Prime, H R A I M, Prime. Oh, Prime. Inhale. Om Raum, H R A U M. Om Raum. Inhale, radiating sun. Om Pra Ha. Pra Ha. Inhale. Oh, ra, ha. Turn those ha's, you draw the belly in. Mahapranam, inhale, coming up. Radiating sun. Exhale, hands at the heart. I'm going to do that again. This time we're going to do it with one sided forward bend. Okay, so you're going to bring your left foot forward from Samstiti. Right foot turned out. Feel free to use the chair for your forward bend. So head to me on the chair. Hands, uh, arms can be straight. Okay, so one option is you're going to come here. The other option is you're going to come here. Your stance, whatever is comfortable. So uh, the wider it is, the, the harder. And that back foot can be turned out to comfort, uh, depending on your lower back and hips. So just notice what that is for your body. And I've been trying to challenge myself to get a bit wider stance. It was just something one of my teachers said one day in Chennai is like, oh, okay, well, yeah, I guess I challenged myself a bit. And then you feel your back foot more when you do that. It's like, so some options. So we're gonna inhale, arms up, exhale, the mantra. You can just listen if you want. Inhale, arms up, exhale, Take a break, hands down by our sides. Okay, so we're gonna do a Chennai style with that break in between. Inhale, arms coming up. I'm gonna call the mantra during this part. It's Om Ram. Om Ram. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, hands coming down. Feel the earth, feel the legs, 
I'm going to do it without the chair. Feel free to do it with the chair. Inhale, Om Hrim, H R I M. Om Hrim. Inhale, coming up. These are Bija Mantras for the sun. Exhale. Hands coming down. They're also great for lifting our spirits from Thomas or darkness. Next one, prune, inhale, arms coming up. Chin in, Jalundara Bandha, palms forward, and fingers together if you like classically. Bam, rin, prune. The next one is Brain, H R I M. Om, Brain. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, feel the legs, feel the feet as you exhale from the pelvic floor to the belly button. Brown, inhale. Next one is Om Brown, H R A U M. Om. Around. Inhale, you can move in the arms first and line with the ears and then coming up. Exhale, starting position. Feel the legs, feel the feet. Last one, Om Ha Ha. Draw your belly in, but you'll see my moving now. Ha. Ah, <laughs> get things moving. You're ready to the bathroom, mommy. Inhale, arms up. Oh. Ah. Ah. Now stay at the bottom and breathe. We really warmed up for this earlier, so stretching those legs. That back hip, again, your hands can be on the chair. This is too much. You're welcome to bring your hands to the big toe side to stretch into the inner thigh. And this is a very good if you've got a twist in your spine as well to help work with that, to untwist. You're actually um well i won't explain it exactly but it's it helps you straighten your spine i'll just say that you can wave in and out of it with a stitchy inhale lift exhale release and you can go to that little toe side you can play with that back foot maybe being even parallel and that gets into the ql hip lower back of the right side and the hands could be on the chair doing all this. And when you're ready, coming up lazily, halfway up, inhale, and then adding their arms. Exhale, hands down and step back. I'm going to do all that on the other side. So those Six Bija Mantra. These are uh, classically done with Surya Namaskaram, but I've started doing them with four bends uh, so you can learn them. And they're wonderful with four bends. Right foot forward, left foot turned out, classically uh, lifting the toes from the heel. I find that hard to do in my body, but if you can, you can try to do that. And that stance, maybe playing with a little bit of a longer stance. We talked about that on the other side, so you can play with that. Finding your position, where is it going to be for your body using the chair or not? Inhale, arms coming up. Om Ram, H R A M. Om Ram. Now, 
of starting position. I want to adjust your stance a bit. Krim, Om Krim, H R I M. Om Krim. Inhale up, exhale starting position. Om Khrum, inhale arms up. Chin in, jaw in, darabanda. Om Khrum. Inhale coming up. Exhale, starting position. Next one's a little tough. Om Hraim. It's like I. H R A I M. Hraim, like I. Om Hraim. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, starting position. Om Kraum. Kraum. Inhale, arms up. Om Kraum. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, starting position. Last one. Om Pra Ha. Throw your belly in twice. Inhale. Giving you a good spring cleanse this morning for Easter. Om Pra Ha. Staying at the bottom. And inhale, lift the chest, get the belly lengthened on the thigh, exhale forward bend. You can be halfway, of course. You can have your arms straight on the chair. Okay, any of those positions. Parshva Uttanasana, one side of forward bend. Bring your hands to the big toe side, perhaps, feeling that stretch in the groin, perhaps into the shin. Inhale, lift, exhale forward. It's getting into the inner thigh. And then the other side gets more into the back hip, lower back, QL, quadratus lumborum. Goes from the hip, from the lower back into the hip, into the leg. Coming to the center, feel free to make that back foot parallel. And gradually coming up, make sure that back foot's a little turned out for stability. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, starting position. Stepping back if you can, finding your samasthiti. Again, you should have that feeling, having done all those four bends of lengthening the spine, now you feel a bit taller. So just notice if you feel that in your body. Just tuning into your intention today, perhaps hands on that lower dantian or in yoga, we call it the nabi point, belly button, it's third chakra, the power center we're moving there, and it's linked down to the second chakra, the hip, pubic area. 
making yoni mudra if you like that diamond around the belly button fingers pointing down remembering your intention today to do with the emotions or the hips Use some heat, heat it langana, some heat to burn away those blocks to prana via apana, the downward flow of energy. I often just say, may I be emotionally free. There's no one emotion that comes to mind. Just bring that chapter four Yoga Sutra intention of Kaivalyam freedom, just asking for freedom, freedom from all of it. So. We're going to uh, remove the chair and uh, we're going to come down to the floor. Just make sure you have your pillow nearby. And um, I think I'm just going to angle my camera down just a touch so you can see me really well. It. Okay, so lying down. Hope you have me. We've got this nice little heater here. We didn't plan this space as we now call it the yoga loft, but uh, the pandemic has meant for lots of furniture moving and various things. So now I have the yoga loft. So I hope you have a nice little spot that's warm for you to lie down. You can also be on a carpet. Some are a little warmer and taking your pillow or you can use a bolster if you've got a bolster I thought I'd just use a regular prop today or a block of course I like the pillow because it's squishy for the what I'm going to teach you so as you exhale you're going to squeeze that block and curl the tailbone under and pull up on the pelvic floor and inhale, release. Let the knees come away a little bit or a lot on the inhale, exhale. Squeeze the pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in. And as you do that, the tail tucks under and you squeeze the pillow right down to the feet. And inhale, release. And again, you can do this with uh, a bolster if you want to use a yoga prop or a block, of course. Exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button, and feel the tail tucked under and squeeze that pillow and feel the feet. This is strengthening the inner thighs. And inhale, release. Exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in, tuck the tail under, pull up on the pelvic floor, squeeze the pillow, feel the feet, inhale. Exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in. Pull up on the pelvic floor, squeeze the pillow, Feel the feet and release. Just rest for a minute. Okay, we're going to add on um, the Vipadapitam bridge. We're going to work just with the hips first and then the upper back. So it's a little bit different. I created this to isolate 
the lower back from the upper back in the bridge pose. Did we put a pitum? So inhale here, exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in, squeeze the pillow, feel the feet, and then lift the hips, just lift the hips. Squeeze, 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 lift just the hips. Now inhale, lift the upper back and maybe bring the arms up and you can let those knees relax a little bit as you do that. So they'll, they'll open a little bit. And then exhale, squeeze. Again, the pillow as you come down as you draw from the pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in. Squeeze the pillow and come down. Okay, we're gonna do that again. I've been teaching this a lot on Tuesday nights for those of you who also come Tuesday. Inhale in the position, let the knees come away from the pillow, a little rest. Exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in, tuck the tail under, lift the hips, squeeze the pillow, just lift the hips off the ground. Now inhale, lift higher, lifting into the chest, press into those feet, you might need to come down a little bit, press into the feet, the knees will come away from the pillow a little bit. Now exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in, squeeze the pillow and gradually come down. Inhale here, relax the legs. Exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in, squeeze the pillow, lift the hips. So you're doing that first part on exhale. Inhale, lifting up. So we have a rule what you can do on inhale, you may also do an exhale, but you're not supposed to do the opposite. Inhale, coming up those knees apart. Exhale. Pulling up from the pelvic floor and squeezing the pillow and coming down. You can let those arms trail a little bit to get a bit of traction through the spine. Should be really activating now this whole pelvic floor to belly button area as well as the hips. One more time, inhale, release the pillow. Exhale. Pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in. Squeeze the pillow, feel the feet lift up. Just the hips. Inhale, lift up higher, adding the chest, breathing into the chest, into the belly. The knees can be slightly away from that prop. Lift as high as you can, press into the feet. Exhale, again, rooting down, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in, squeeze the pillow. Feel the feet gradually coming down. And we're gonna rest. Take that pillow aside and stretch those legs. Just changing the sequence a little bit today. We're gonna do our Tadaka Mudra Apanasana now as a counter. Inhale, arms coming up. Again, this is a back arch, but as we exhale, we're going to draw in one leg at a time. So start with the left leg, or if you like, your easier side is the right, you can start with that. This is getting into the opposite hip and stretching one side of the lower back at a time. Inhale, stretching out nice and straight. Arms overhead, Tadaka Mudra. Exhale, Ekapada Apanasana. Now you can do this with the opposite leg bent. You could draw it in at the same time. And then straighten the legs. So if that feels better for you, you can bend that opposite leg by just drawing it in as you draw the knee in. Hopefully that'll work. Or you can just keep the legs bent the whole time and go side to side like this. That's another modification. You don't get as much into the opposite hip when you do that version. 
So I'm doing it with a straight leg so I can stretch the opposite hip. Now that's about stretching. We're going to move this more into strength in a minute. This is also great for tracking of the knee. Side that's moving in. Okay, so we're going to move more into strength. So rather than hugging the knee, just draw the leg in, drag it on the floor, and bring your hands down by your sides and draw the leg into where you can. Don't hug it. It's making you work that upon on more. Inhale. Extend. Again, you can start with bent knees if you like, rather than straight legs. And keep that going. I'm going to show you with the bent knees if you need to do something a little bit easier for your back. You can do this. Ekapada Apanasana. That's more strength work. Getting into that core strength. And if you want some challenge, you can do both legs at once. So this is full Apanasana from Tadaka Mudra. And just resting. So you can rest and use your chest. You can rest with your legs straight. Legs straight is a bit of a back bend. So if you feel you need more of a back bend, you can do that. Some of you might like to put a, a pillow under the hips to create even more of a back bend. Or you can have your knees to your chest or your feet on the ground. So this is a, a very subtle back bend. Just taking the back bend of Chidaka Mudra up a notch. So you can do that if you like. Or Suptasana, just in this position. But I'm going to emphasize the back bend because one of you wanted a few more back bends today. So this is for you. This is getting into those kidneys. And it also gets into the hips, uh, tucks the tail under and opens the front of the hips. The psoas. Hip flexors. Okay, we're going to go from there. We're going to go around the clock. So, in doing this on the Tuesday night class, you guys are going to get this today. This is for strength work. So, rolling onto one side. I'm going to have my left leg on top, but um, really doesn't matter. You can start with your easy side. Now, classically, the legs are straight and you're in this position, and this is the full pose, an antasana. However, we're doing a strength version, and you can do that in this position, but I don't find this very good for the neck myself. So I like to have this modification with. Uh, the head on the arm. Now, if that doesn't work for you, you've got your pillow and you can put that under your head and your arms forward. So that might work better for you. And hi to the dog joining us for yoga. Always like to see the pets. All right. So inhale, I'm going to bend that bottom leg as well. And I'm doing this for a therapeutic reason. So that we can get more traction in that top hip. So inhale, Lengthen that top hip, lengthen it, point the toes away and lengthen your point, point, point. Stretch from the hands to the big toe. So that's your inhale. Stretch and you feel some traction in that hip. Exhale, you're going to strengthen now the hip by bringing the leg up. The toes are pointing forward, the knee is pointing forward, the leg is straight, 
and the hand is on the thigh. Inhale, lengthen. I know for at least two of you, you're going to be very happy I'm doing this right now. Point the toe. You can see a flex foot there, point it. Point, point, point. Yes, that's right. And exhale, flex the toes towards me and or wherever you are, your front. I know cameras are a little hard when you lie down to get them to work. It's fun if you've seen the bottoms of your feet though. Inhale, pointing and stretch like someone's pulling your foot. And then exhale. Now you're strengthening the outside of the leg. Yeah. And this is the version I usually teach. And this was a real game changer when I had a hip injury in 2018. It took me about three years to figure it out. Actually, it was like two years, two and a half, two years to figure it out, and then a year to finally get out of being in pain. So injuries can be challenging, but they always teach you stuff. And this was one of my takeaways. I learned a lot about strengthening and balancing hips from that injury. And I no longer have hip pain, so I'm very happy about that. And I've worked with some people giving this pose um, to uh, delay having to get hip surgery. It's also good post-op hip surgery. We're going to go to the other side. You're probably getting tired. I think we did a lot of those, sorry, probably at least eight. Just rest for a minute. Side child, you're probably feeling that the glute need having worked a lot. Probably the glute min as well. Going to the other side, earlier we worked with uh, the glute max. So we're working all the gluteus muscles. It's helpful to have a bit of anatomy when you're trying to understand these things. Whatever you did on the first side, do on the second in terms of your modifications. So you might have done something like this with a physio before, the, um, and you could do that. The yoga version uh, is, again, this is the pose, an antasana, and then we modify it by moving the leg around. So inhale, extend the leg long and the arm on top, hands together, sleeping Vishnu pose. Anantasana, ananta means balance, harmony. Exhale, bringing the leg up, knee forward, hand on the thigh. Inhale, extend nice and long. Someone's pulling your big toe. Now you can play with bringing the foot back a little bit for your hip. There's some uh, variations you can play with. You can also play with pointing the toe, toes down uh, when we flex the foot. So I'll show that the next time. So exhale, the toes could be pointed down and that gets into a different part of the hip. Look, it's more the glute min when you do that, if I'm remembering. And really do that traction piece on the inhale. Someone's pulling your big toe away. Exhale, and do this about eight times. And think of that bhavana of balance. So bhavana is an intention that you infuse yourself with. Something that doesn't quite exist, you bring it into the present moment. You infuse your body and mind with an idea, an image, a visualization. Balance, balance, balancing those hips, balancing the mind. And when you've had enough, which is probably getting pretty close, I basically do this until I get tired. So <laughs> getting a little bit of Maggie's practice today, just finishing and coming to your side child as a counter. And you're probably feeling quite a bit of activation in those hips. And strong hips, so important as we age to keep us from um, falling when we lose our, our footing. And working with the feet like we do, we, we do, we're bringing more awareness into our feet, which also will help us um, resist falling. Okay, so I said we were going to go around the world. This is a bit of a counter, I hope, for you. You're going to go on to your belly now. 
Yep. <laughs> now we're strengthening the back of the hip. So I created this little um, sequence because I just thought it was fun to move around. Um, sometimes I do one hip and then the other and this in between. But anyway, we're doing this way today. Now your arms can be straight in front of you. They can be, um, I'm going to start like this with folding my hands on top of each other, my forehead on my hands. And I'm just going to start with the hips. Okay, you might need to look at me, I know, first. So tuck your toes under. Now this works with the hips, but also the knees. And I know one of you today uses this for your knees. So this is for you. You're going to inhale, straighten the legs so that the knees are off the ground. Now that's a lot of work, eh? Yeah. And then exhale, release the knees. So just that. The toes are tucked under the whole time if you don't get cramps. If you do just release them at any time. Inhale, straighten. And exhale, release. So for me, I can really feel that uh, leg that's a bit longer now. It uh, actually has room to move because I'm on the floor. So that's kind of cool. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, release. Now you could put a block between the thighs if you want to take up the notch. I'm not going to do that today, but you could. Next one, we're going to stay in the position. Inhale could bring your legs together and try that and just stay there. And if you have your legs together or block, you can squeeze your thighs together. And just breathe here. If it's too much, release anytime. This is also really great for the lower back. It adds a lot of stability to the back. Helps activate the multifidus, the deep back muscles, stabilizers. When you're ready, release. Now, relax those feet. We're going to add um, the upper back to this. Get into those kidneys and adrenals. This will bring a little joy into your day. So if you're feeling a bit damp from this weather, this is going to get that dampness and burn it away. So I've got my hands in a diamond shape in front. You can have them underneath your forehead, or you can have your arms straight in front of you. I'm going to, for my body, I really like this diamond shape. So feel free to play, play with these positions, hands, um, something like that, like quite close to you, but a little apart, bigger, and last step. Okay, so you're going to inhale. You're going to lift your chest and your legs at the same time. And exhale, release. Inhale, lift your legs and your chest at the same time. You could do one side at a time. I'm doing both. Exhale, release. Inhale, lifting up. This is Shalabhasana. Locust pose. The other one was a preparation for it. We could do this with the toes tucking under and do the same thing. You can do this way if you want to. If you prefer not lifting the legs, that gets more into the chest. Now, if you are prone to headaches, please keep the um, uh, chin tucked in, keep the neck long because it could activate a headache. Be careful. Classically, we do look forward, but for many people, that does cause headaches. So be careful. We're focusing on the glutes. Put your mind on those glutes, the big glute max, big gluteus muscles. And perhaps you're focusing on your kidneys, adrenals. Trying to help to try to move the legs first so the chest doesn't take over. We're going to finish up. Go back into child's pose through an inhale cobra. If that works for you, the hands are below the shoulders, elbows are hugging in. 
and exhale, coming back to a child's pose. Now, if this pose doesn't work for you, because of knees, you can go on your back and hug your knees to your chest. You do the hip version, Iyengar style with the knees apart. And you can take that pillow and this can be very soothing for the nervous system. You can turn your head to one side, you can hug that pillow. And this is nice, of course, for the yoga bolster too, if you've got one. Ideally, um, mine isn't quite there, but it works a bit better with this with the bolster, actually. Um, you've got it, a pillow or whatever, connect it to your gut. Switching your head if you've got your head turned. I wanted to show with just everyday props, so you don't have to have these fancy yoga props. The wider you make your knees, the more you get into the groin. Oh, we are in flow today. Plan is working. All right. So coming onto your back with the pillow under your hips. And the pillow no higher than your waist, wherever you are. And you can use a bolster as well. So again, I'm just using a pillow today to show a non-yoga prop because not all of you have these fancy props. And my teachers in India don't have them either. So they use pillows and chairs and blankets and you know those normal everyday things that we have around the house. Um, so bringing your legs up to the sky and your um, pillow no higher than your waist. You'll know if it's in the wrong place, it will hurt your lower back. So just adjust it until you feel like it's at the right place for your back. This is called Viparita Karani. In this position, I'm just gonna do a little fun inversion of this for the hips the lower back and for grounding. You're gonna exhale, bend one knee into the chest. So I'm gonna have you hug that knee. So it's like an inverted apanasana. It's called a kunchanasana, inhale. Normally we don't hug the knee, but in this version we can exhale, hugging the knee. So you can keep doing that or do it without hugging the knee. Exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in. I'm going to keep hugging the knee. It's feeling good for my back today to do that. It's also great for constipation. Uh, massages one side of the colon at a time. And I don't think I've taught this in quite a while. So something different. I'm obviously working with the hips and the lower back. So wonderful for grounding, stress reduction, removing toxins. We're going to soon go into a meditation on the kleshas from the Yoga Sutras. They're misperceptions that cloud our mind. Keep us from our inner light. If you like, you can try both legs like we did earlier in Suttasana. Exhale, knees to chest. Inhale, straighten the legs. Exhale, knees to chest. Inhale, straighten the legs. So it's possibly done in uh, shoulder stands. So some of you, if that's in your practice, you could be doing this in shoulder stand with one leg or both. I'm 
helpful when you're ready, just finishing up. If you did do a full shoulder stand, make sure you do fish or cobra as a counter. Otherwise, go into your Shavasana. Remove that pillow under your thighs. Or if it felt good, you could put it on your hips. Some of my students like to do that, uh, to have a lift in the hips, which uh, I learned from my students. Some of my trainees, they taught me that. I'm gonna sit and I'm going to chant for you uh, from the Yoga Sutra. So you stay there for about five minutes and just rest. I'm gonna take you through meditation on the kleshas. Kleshas are also spoken about in Buddhism. Buddhist philosophy, which the Buddha was a Hindu before he you know, left because of he was a Protestant like Christ was with Judaism, who was uh, someone who wanted to bring a different awareness to these teachings, these yoga teachings. A wonderful yogi, I would call him. Just finding your sukhasana, your comfort spot, your shavasana. First klesha is avidya, not seeing things clearly. Is there something in your life you just can't quite see the truth of the situation? And if you have no idea, you can just think of this word avidya or English, this perception. Avidya. 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 This one is Asmita. False identification, identifying with something that is not you, egotism. Asmita 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 This one is Raga. Desire. Attachment to something that is not serving you, wanting something. That is. Not helping you. Raga. 
Waisha pushing away something that is in your life that is serving you, but that you don't want. Aversion. We shall, we shall, we shall, we shall, we shall. We shall, we shall, we shall. The last one is yes. fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear locked in your system from the past. Fear of the future. Abeni Besha 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 Avidya Asmita Raga Vesha Abhini Vesha Vesha When we let go of these misperceptions of our truth, of our light, of our life. These clouds that cover our sunshine. 
May our inner light, may our practice burn them away. So that we're left with clarity, be vacant. And left with peace. Shan fish shan fish shan tea shan fish shan fish shan tea shan fish shan fish shan tea Hari he Thank you very much.